Hey, welcome back this morning. We're looking now again at 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 27 through 36. We won't get every verse. Then a man of God came to Eli and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Did I not clearly reveal myself to the house of your father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? Did I not choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest and to offer upon my altar to burn incense? and to wear an ephod before me? And did I not give to the house of your father all the offerings of the children of Israel made by fire? Why do you kick at my sacrifice and my offerings, which I have commanded in my dwelling place, and honor your sons more than me, to make yourselves fat with the best of all the offerings of Israel, my people? Therefore the Lord God of Israel says, and he goes on to say, I'm going to take away the priesthood. People in your family are going to die at a young age, and you're going to have illness. And look at verse 34. Now this shall be a sign to you that will come upon your two sons, on Hophni and Phinehas. In one day they shall die, both of them. Then I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. I will build him a sure house and he shall walk before my anointed forever. Carrying on at verse 36. And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left in your house will come and bow down to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread and say, please, put me in one of the priestly positions that I may eat a piece of bread. So here's a prophecy. Remember, last morning, yesterday morning, Eli told his son, stop this, stop behaving so immorally, and they just ignored it. We know that he should have paid attention. He should have, he should have done something. God would have helped him, even though he was old and his sons were young and kind of rough guys. God would have helped. But he did not act as he should have. He didn't act with the authority he had as the high priest. And so his sons are doing all kinds of wickedness. And so here comes God sends another prophet. And the prophet tells him, your sons are going to die in one day. All these terrible things are going to happen. Your descendants are going to be in trouble from your particular family. They'll come begging for bread. But I'm going to raise myself up a priest who will be faithful and who will do what's right. There's another piece here that's kind of interesting, too. It's talking about all the fat of you're taking the best of all the offerings of Israel. We're going to find out here in just a couple of mornings that, that Eli was very heavy. And maybe him and his sons and his family, maybe they really liked to, to eat a lot of the fat from those offerings. You need to go back to Leviticus 3 and find out about the fat on the offerings and what's supposed to happen there. But anyway, what we have here is Eli's in a position of authority. He is the leader. He is not acting faithfully. He knows there's wickedness happening. He's not addressing it. It's just carrying on worse and worse. So finally, God intervenes. God acts. There's a space and time when we are, if we are faithful, we can prevent things from becoming so much worse. But here what we have is a leader who meant well, his words were good. He meant well, but he didn't act. He didn't act in the spiritual emergency that his nation was in, that his people were in. And so are there parallels for us today? Are there occasions and needs for the church today to be much more faithful and to deal with sin? It's a sad thing. None of us really like to deal with it, but sometimes it has to be dealt with in a firmer way than we've been dealing with some of the problems we have. We like to just kind of hope things will go away. Usually things don't go away. They just get worse. So here's a warning for us and a warning for fathers, fathers and mothers for their children. Help your children to be in the right way. There's never been a time when it's been harder to be a young person serving the Lord than today. Let's do what we can to help them. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, for generations now, there's been a strong attack on the family. We know it. We also know that God has given us the equipment that we need to help our children to do right. We also notice here spiritual responsibility and a lack of action when there's an emergency. Help, Lord, we pray. Every leader in your local church, every leader in your denomination, we pray that they'll be students of the Bible, that they'll search out God's truth for these last days. We pray that people will be faithful in dealing with sin. And we won't be just a big stack of words that does not amount to anything. Help us, Lord, to be faithful, even when we can't see quite how it's going to end. You be our leader. You be our helper, Lord. And all the glory will go, come to you and all the, all the blessings going to accrue to your people. So we pray for that and we ask for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, very tragic section today from Eli and his sons, Hophni and Phinehas. Really sounds grim for their eternal disposition. And now God sends a prophet and tells him judgment's coming. Really grim stuff, but you know what? It's for our good. God be with you today.